PF program is loaded into the kernel. I'm sorry, I'm not sure what happens. <laughs> sorry about that. It's okay, okay. Yeah, so the EVPF program are loaded into the kernel, but you are not the one sees what's happening, right? As a user, you typically would run a user space program that tells you what's going on with your EVPF program in terms of well, maybe you pass some parameters to your user space program, then the user space program kind of displays some data for you. Um, for example, based on maybe TCP dump is the example, or maybe based on a TCP connector or maybe based on out of memory events. Um, so the, the, the user space program essentially tells um, the, the Linux kernel, hey, go ahead, load my other eBPF program or somebody else's eBPF program if I can trust and load it and attach it to the right event. Um, so you can, essentially you can write the, EV, uh, the UEBPF user space program in any languages that have libraries to allow you to easily load the EBPF programs. And these days most common way is load through uh, libbpf. Uh, the caveat though is not all the programming language have API to or libraries to allow you to invoke libbpf. So um, most common are using C or Rust um, or using Python. Actually Python, uh, most common are using C and, uh, um, C and Rust. Um, now let's talk about BCC. Uh, it's actually overwhelming when I first started learning uh, EVPF programs using BCC. Uh, BCC is a popular toolkit to get started with eBPF for learning purposes. It's a really provide many, many samples and uh, you know it has all these examples, compiler co co collection for you to use. But one thing I find uh, issues with BCC as part of my learning is uh, the user space program is written in Python and as part of the user space program, you would have the kernel program written in C. Uh, so which means it's really odd. Um, if you look at this line here at the end, right? So that if I believe is your eBPF program. And then on top of that, you also have your user space program also in this here, um, like print out something, you know, uh, display all that, uh, or passing some parameters all in Python. So it's a, it's an interesting uh, environment to operate and um, Everything is actually compiled at runtime. So even though you saw this Python program, you know you have Python compiler on your machine, it's actually most likely it's not going to work. It needs uh, to require the system to run eBPF program, must have the kernel header installed, it needs a particular version or above of Linux kernel, and they use but a lot of significant resources during starting because it needs to compile and then run. So one thing I find out, I'm a Mac user and I had to actually find out, you know, what is the right Vagrant file to run uh, my first Hollow World uh, BCC sample. Uh, it actually took me quite a while to find out. So this is back to my point about the runtime environment, uh, you know, the headers, you know, the right kernel version, it all needs to be in place before you can actually execute your simple eBPF program. So uh, with that, the industry innovated on uh, libbpf and uh, query, which is compile once and run everywhere. How many of you are using Java or Golang today, right? I'm sure you appreciate the fact that somebody else uh, compiled it for you. You could just grab and run it, right? So that's uh, this uh, libbpf and the bpf co-run is really essentially for you for eBPF programs. So with libbpf, you can write both the kernel and the user space program in C, and then you can compile them in advance 
then you can execute them on any of the system as long as it has the recent kernel version because it needs to have the right kernel version. I believe it's 5.4.5.5 that has um, BPF uh, enabled so that you can run this, uh, your eBPF program that's loaded through uh, libbpf. So let's go through how it works uh, writing a simple eBPF program. Um, so as you can see, we have an eBPF program that's written in C. Uh, right, that's a simple source code. Uh, we, uh, we essentially said if it's an enter into the TCP connector event, you know, we're going to execute uh, this uh, method. And if it's exit into the TCP connector event, we're going to execute, uh, this, execute this method. And then you can use your compiler, which in this case is clone, to compile your eBPF code, which is generate the bytecode we mentioned earlier, that is the BPF.0, uh, which is the um, executable, linkable format alpha file uh, with eBPF bytecode. Now, when you run the eBPF program, that's when you need the user space as a user to interact with it. So you typically have a loader that's part of your user space that loads the bytecode uh, we talked about earlier uh, from uh, the compiler, and then you uh, create the map uh, from the user space, and then you, your kernel program typically also interact with the map, um, and the user space load the BPF program, and then attach it to the right hook point. In our example is TCP v4 connect. And uh, uh, as the events of TCP uh, v4 connect happens on your uh, Linux system, it triggers the events where your eBPF program would act on the event, right, at the entry or exit. And then the eBPF program can update the map accordingly uh, to whichever data that's interest to you. And then finally, your user space program can read the map and then display whatever is important to your user. So now this triggers a question, right? This uh, user space, kernel space, what if we all could only write the kernel programs, right? We don't have to worry about the user space. This is exactly what Bumblebee is. Uh, Bumblebee is an open source project. In fact, uh, we are taking the Bumblebee to CNCF as a sandbox project. Uh, it's pending approval. Uh, so Bumblebee is designed to help you easily build your eBPF program, to publish your eBPF program to an OCR registry, to actually run your eBPF program or somebody else's eBPF program just by using our runner. So if you scan that QR code, that would take you to bumblebee.io. Um, so with Bumblebee, you can focus on writing your eBPF code um, and then Bumblebee take care of the user space program uh, for you automatically. And in, on top of that, Bumblebee also expose your data as metrics and logs so you can plug into permissions, for example. Um, Bumblebee also uh, provide uh, the uh, leave BPF compatible BPF code. So we only, that's, we only support the newer Linux kernel that's um, based on leave BPF 5455. Five. Um, then you can uh, use the push, build, run, uh, the whole life cycle with uh, OCI compliance registry like Google registry, GitHub registry. Um, so let's talk about how Bumblebee works. Um, so first uh, we provide a pre-built, containerized build uh, environment, um, which is this builder, for example, this builder images are in the GitHub uh, registry, container registry. Um, well, in this image, we would have the LLVM clan compiler. We also have the common BPF headers for you. Um, when you need to build your eBPF program, you can re uh, leverage your builder using bbuild command, and uh, it would build uh, your eBPF program into an eBPF image. 
um, so that um, you can take that images, plug into your common GitHub pipeline to interact with image registry. So we would build the, the ebpf.c uh, into the out file, the bytecode file we talked about early, and then package it into the registry, um, package it into an image which you can push to whichever registry that supports OCI images. Uh, when you distribute your images with Bumblebee, by the way, Bumblebee recently support cosine now, uh, so you can push uh, your images to an OCI registry using B push command, and then you can also pull somebody out, you can uh, run uh, using B runler, so, so that could be the image uh, locally on your machine, or it could be images from, a, a public image from a GitHub registry, or Google registry, or any other OCI registry that out there from somebody else that you trust, and then you can uh, run it on your machine. So, uh, so running, uh, so essentially how does the running with Bumblebee works? So when you specify B run command with the image, uh, we're going to read the BPF program from the image. That's the bytecode uh, we talk about, right? So we're going to load that. We're going to create a map um, and uh, we're going to attach it to the right hook points um, so that your program will be loaded into the kernel and uh, you also have the map in there and the, where our user space program would display the data from the map for you. Um, so, um, so when you run with the Bumblebee, uh, we on top of all that, we also output the data and uh, emit the metrics for you. Um, so you can well up with your popular um, metrics uh, pro program like Permissus. So with that, um, we talk about five minutes, so we're going to do a demo. Hopefully that's the most interesting part of the talk. Um, can you guys see my screen? Good? Okay, let me maximize it. So yeah, I, so I basically developed this demo uh, for the conference. Uh, we're using a platform called Instruct, uh, which uh, uh, it's a really nice platform. I really like it. So, actually, um, sorry, this is not the right program. I'm sorry. Um, I actually have another talk tomorrow, so this is the program for the other talk. So let me uh, find out the right program first. It needs to say five minutes in there, <laughs> which that one didn't. Okay, this is the right one, sorry about that. Um, all right, so let me go ahead, restart this. So what this is going to do, right? So I'm running this in my cloud. I could run it in my VM, but um, my VM could have some issue. It's just so much easy. If I'm presenting from somebody else's machine, it can run in the cloud. So what this does is it's provision a virtual machine in the cloud. Um, that's close to me, and it's trying to set up the environment for the demo for me. Uh, with that, we're going to try to develop a really hello world, uh, very simple eBPF programs in five minutes, hopefully. And then we'll also pull down somebody else's program and then try to run it. Um, so. Uh, so let's see how the environment stood up. Typically, the environment does take a minute, uh, so I should pre-start everything, but I want to take a pause, see if anyone have any questions where we stand up the environment. All right, we have a question in the room. I guess for the, for the online people, yeah, if you speak on the microphone, they can hear too. That's a great question. EVPF and WebAssembly. Um, I know WebAssembly supports C as a language, right? Um, Actually, I might, but it supports lots of languages, yeah. Yes, uh, I'm curious. Uh, I, I don't think that's something we looked at at the moment, but I'm actually, as a company, we're very interested in WebAssembly also. Uh, what's your specific user case as far as WebAssembly and the EBPF? Uh, maybe we should connect oh, okay. offline. I don't know. I'll tell you later. 
Yeah, because that, that's a really interesting thought. All right, my environment is up. I guess one minute is right. So on the right side, I do have a 15 minutes timer. So can you guys see it? Um, is it too small? Okay, I'm getting a little bit of arrow. I'm not sure what that is, um, but I'll continue. So the first thing we're going to do, um, is the font size okay? All right. The first thing we're going to do is download Bumblebee. I did target 15 just in case I go over five, but I'll try. All right, I guess it's not a great environment today. Um, let's see, let's see what's going on. Hmm. Doesn't look too good. Uh, let's see again. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. Let me actually kill this reef spin. It doesn't look a good environment to me. I did retry it. Ah, let me actually stop this um, and restart. Sorry about that. It might be a bad environment that was connected to my other thing because it was um, showing a program <laughs> that was from my other track. Um, hopefully, hopefully it would come up live. So uh, just really quickly, um, what I'm, we are going to show is if you search um, get started with eBPF, and Bumblebee. Um, I actually wrote a blog about this uh, on what I'm going to show you, uh, that simple program. So the steps are all here. What I did differently is actually um, trying to get, um, show you in a live demo environment. In the meanwhile, I'm actually going to start my VM. So um, sorry about that. Solo I.O. Bumblebee. We can do a Vagrant VM, we'll do that. All right, so uh, it's start. Hopefully this time didn't give me an arrow. All right, it looks better. Finger crossed. Uh, in the meanwhile, let me check if my, okay. I think it looks better. So uh, the first thing we're going to do, uh, what is that? Okay, yeah. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, it's the same arrow, so unfortunate. Okay, uh, with that, I'm going to count them on my VM. Slash, yeah. So should I just type bash? Uh, Oh, thank you. Wow, you guys are awesome. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, thank you, everyone. <laughs> oh, who was that? Maybe I should invite you for at least something. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I was just going to stand up my VM. All right, um, it looks like it's downloading. Let me check on my Wi Fi. Should I use hotspot? Do you guys have Wi-Fi issue? Unfortunately, they couldn't provide me a network cable here. Do you guys have Wi-Fi issue? Yeah, I did connect that, to, but maybe I'll try hotspot if the Wi-Fi is too slow. Let me open my hotspot. Sorry, this is the second challenge today. Um, personal hotspot on. Sorry, five minutes is uh, <laughs> turned out to be a lot longer. So 
sorry about that, as everything is. Okay, it's running. Oh, right. So I'll try my hotspot, see if it's better. Who knows? All right. So we have this um, now, and uh, we can use be init to create what? I think it's the network now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, so this is, let me refresh it, see if it actually get back to it. Yeah, hopefully my hotspot is actually have better than the Wi-Fi here. Yeah, it looks like my VM is up to you. All right, I have a backup environment. All right, so let's see if B is working here now. Uh, let's type the B command. Yeah, it looks like I have to load it again. All right, so to do bash. Sorry, my hotspot is also very slow. All right, uh, we're downloading here again, and now we're doing the init command. It's going to ask you what languages do you want to use uh, for your eBPF program. Uh, currently, we only support C, but we are planning to add Rust into it. Uh, for the simplicity, we're going to take uh, the defaults. And uh, we're going to initialize with a network program with a type of map is ring buffer. As you can see, we also support hash map. And uh, what type of output we would like, we would just want to print something like hello world. And uh, with that, uh, we will go ahead and uh, put our file locations. Um, so hopefully, yeah, so that saves uh, our skeleton BPF program, Hello World. Uh, with that, I'm going to open up the program. Sorry, it's just very slow, the, the Wi-Fi. Um, okay, sorry, as you can see, it's typed multiple things. All right, so what we're going to do is open up this program. As you can see, the skeleton program is very simple. It has uh, the VM Linux, uh, these are the headers uh, provided by B. Uh, it also have a license, uh, which you can change it uh, if necessary. And uh, the first thing we want to do is add the ring buffer uh, struct data in the event, right, in the event struct. So uh, what we want to is add some messages. Sorry, you can see I'm moving very slow. It's not because I am very slow, it's just the network is very slow. So um, what we want to do is, um, we want to add, let me see if copy paste is faster than me typing. Yeah, so um, let me format it a little bit. So what we want to do is uh, add uh, a PID, which is the process ID, you know, whenever uh, the process related to any of the events uh, we are hooking to, and we want to add a message, right? So we said we're gonna do a network event, and we want to add a message. I put 30 as the character lens because I'm thinking about Hello World uh, Open Source Summit, which is about 25 characters. So that's the first thing we're doing. The second thing we are going to do is we're going to scroll down to the TCP v4 connector. That's the network event uh, we are targeting here. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we are going to um, we are going to uncomment I'm going to try oh, I think it's back. What we're going to do is uh, on okay. 
All right, I only have a few minutes. Let's see if I can pull this together. So the second thing we're going to do is uncomment this line. And then the third thing we're going to do is uh, uh, write this hello messages uh, into this program, right? So we added, um, sorry, it's just a little bit slow. I'll try not type. So the third thing we're going to do is we add a simple thing called uh, Hello Open Source Summit, and I wanted to add it right before we submit to the event. So I'm just trying to move my cursor uh, right to here. All right, yes. See if we can add it, and then let's format it slightly, then we should be good to go to save it. All right, I want to. All right, so uh, let's go ahead, save it. Thank you so much for bear with me. Live demo is hard. That's one thing I learned for sure. Okay, so now what we are doing is we're using the B build program, right? We talk about we can build eBPF program and we can compile it to the bytecode and we can actually generate OCI images. So in this case, we're laying the images simply as hello uh, v1, right? So the images is there on my local environment. So I can list the images. Um, as you can see, you can also see my Linux version 5.11. And uh, to run B, we're going to give a little bit of privilege to the B program, because a lot of Linux uh, eBPF program does require some special uh, privilege. In our case, we need to give, because um, it's a network event, so we need to give a little bit of privileges related to network events. And look, that's my hello messages, and I already have TCP Connect, um, because this is a VM in the cloud. Ooh, thank you. I know I did more than five, but on the ideal network scenario, I might be able to do five. In fact, that's all five in my practice runs. All right, um, so if you took her, you can see more. Um, I guess it's closed, so I'm not going to try that. Um, um, so let me get out of here. One other thing I want to show quickly uh, with the next few minutes is you can also, um, oh, I already have my Docker registry, that's why. So you can uh, push the image to a local registry. Um, so I already have a local registry because when I tried to uh, run my registry, right, it failed because it's already running. And uh, you can also use somebody else's image. So I'm pulling out these images on GitHub, right? So look, it's actually giving me more data, right? So it's also related, I believe it's also TCP Connect, but this one has a counter, it counts like source and destination address. So if you have somebody you can trust, then you can, uh, you can, you can you know, run them program easily. I guess I'm pretty much out of time, so I want you, you know, if you guys are interested in this demo, follow my blog. We're also showing a workshop, I believe, on Thursday about eBPF. So feel free to, you know, sign up for our other sessions from Solo. Um, questions from the audience? <laughs> wow, thank you. Well, thank you everyone for bear with me. I apologize for all the technical difficulties. It never happened when I rehearsed all these, so. When you did that setcap command, are there security consequences to letting anyone on the system use the B binary then? Should that be like locked down to only let a certain group run? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it should because especially it requires certain privileges, right? Um, because you have to give, like I, I think I gave a couple of special high privileges to whoever runs the be run command, so you would require that, yeah. So typically you could, I think a common way to use this is you run be runner and then you emit metrics, which I didn't get to show by the way, and then you can have your user maybe view the data on the dashboard. I think that would be a very interesting way to leverage this. 
Yeah, good, great question. You have another um, question? So I think B makes it very convenient, clearly, to, it's like running Docker on equivalent here. But uh, does that support like uh, some advanced features like tail call or chaining uh, that might be there? Uh, do you have that in there? Uh, did you ask a tail call or chaining? Tail, uh, tail calls, tail calls or chaining of EBP. Like if you want to run multiple eBPF programs. Oh, then, oh uh, I see, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, a good, that's a great question. Yeah, I think currently not. We could uh, look into that, yeah. add into the roadmap. Yeah. So far, uh, it's more focusing on enable users to run eBPF programs uh, with, you know, easy to display power, you know, so save them writing their own user space code, but chaining is actually a little bit more complicated, yeah. Yeah, I think if it's on the roadmap, that would be great. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we can look into that if that's uh, something super interesting. In fact, we are relying on the community to help us shape um, the, the roadmap of uh, Bumblebee. Hey, I understand how packet filter is kind of in the name but I was curious if you know of any clever novel usages of the technology for non-network domains, if it helps on coming from Intel here. So I'm more focused on hardware in general. Yeah, so uh, one of the company um, I, we looked recently is Pixie. They provide really interesting observabilities, leveraging eBPF. So the industry is going to the thoughts of, okay, you can run microservices, you can run Envoy proxy, you know, in uh, Istio or service mesh environment to collect uh, your telemetry data. What if I don't want to run the proxy, right? What if I want to just use eBPF to collect telemetry data?